Yes. So we want to get two recordings at least because then they can have we can use it as minutes. Later. Yeah. So is this recording so, now? Yeah. So, yeah. So it's recording. So we should be good. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Should I log in on my phone and go to the other room and see if I can? Might be a good yeah. idea. We did some of that yesterday, but it would help, especially if you were completely yeah. out of earshot. You know. Yeah. You know, how did we get it last yesterday? How did we get it so it just shows the list? Oh, remember wow. from the pictures? I don't remember. Seems like we went kind of moved it. We went down to the controls are up here. We went to participants. So I won't have to be let in on this. That no, one has it? No, this one has it. Yeah, but this okay. didn't say. Oh, there, you're, you're. Yeah. Yeah, and then just take this and slide it over here, wherever you want. Okay, to. but this one, yeah, this, this isn't any problem, but this, I wanted this to be small. Remember, we did something to get those to just be a list across, like this is, or, or am I? No, no, not on the videos. We had the list of the, we had the chat open. Yeah, the chat, but I don't remember the list of the attendees. Okay. Yeah, I think we just covered it up, Dan. Like okay. We moved this okay. back over okay. here, oh, all right. and then you want to open chat. That work? It sounds great, but it's also because they're standing right, they're sitting right in front of the computer as the mic. Well, oh, you what, should. Yeah, you know, what we'll do is when the speaker speak here and speak in this. Can you can yeah. you do that? Yeah. So we can the test. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want, yeah, I mean, I can place this wherever I want, right? I, I'm expecting I'll just grab it. This is, is it coming through? Yeah, this, this is this is so yeah. so we're going to get to be, we're going to see quite a few, and now I can see who's muted and who isn't. Mm -hmm. This is how I had it yesterday. This is just how did you get to this screen? Then participants, you popped it up, and I pulled it. Okay. All right. I'll remember none of this four months from now, but hopefully. So Fair enough. Like enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can so, I play with this a little bit? Yeah, this is, yeah. Um, yeah, we don't want that. Live. Original sound for musicians let's try that because what i was telling him is the as it's coming through the microphone the computer the microphone knows that that's further away than someone sitting at the computer yeah so it's filtering it like background noise oh that's why it comes out like oh okay. <laughs> okay Suppose this mic input level. Let's raise raise that up a little bit. What do you think? Um, well, that this is just the volume. Okay, but this that, one. if we um, put the input level higher, maybe it will pick it up better. You're saying this isn't picking up very well. Maybe. So right now there's a lot of echo on it. Can we Even try? Like Let's, the echo yeah, try that, and then we want to play with these a little bit. High fidelity music mode might be good too. See this. Same as system system microphone. Oh, 
Hello, hello, hello. Testing the microphone of the computer. Right, the Thank you for your I don't, don't stop, don't stop yet, because uh, I, I just turned the, the microphone up on here. Okay. So let's, so this is testing. Control, I've got to exclude. I have to turn people's mics off as they log in. I have to use this computer constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, you know? so we, can't, uh, we can't do that. We can't move it over on the podium. Can we just put it like on the chair there and you sit right next to the podium? Well, no, we're all connected here oh. with that HDMI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. And we have. Um, yeah. Unless we move the did we podium. try switching yeah. this? Yeah. Let's try this. Maybe, unless we move the podium over there. Huh. That's a smart solution. Echo cancellation. So I did. No. That's what I had on before, and it wasn't. It didn't sound good. But let's try the high fidelity. Okay. So this is. pack it plugs into the computer and it is two live mics yeah. but the problem is um, they have to be wearing those in addition they, so they have the speaker has to wear that which is not the real small not a big yeah. deal but then that is the only microphone it turns off this mic right. so for the zoom meeting they only get those two little ones you don't hear anything else in the room right how do we sort and we, we thought about that because yesterday they don't have the in -room Right. Well, we would we would still talk here, and we'd have the little clip-on microphone here for the speaker. We hear here they would hear whatever. Yeah. And the Zoom meeting would it would go through the little mic directly in. That's the way to do it. Yeah. And then but if you don't have those, this will, doesn't get heard. Right. And they would have to have like a mic pack too, right? And you really need more than the two, though, because um, for instance, if I'm going to read a question to Bob. Yeah. If I'm going to read a question that comes over Zoom that that we need to, and Tina and I have it, she's going to send me a message of questions that I need to have him answer or I, I need to read to him or have him read. If we do that, um, they wouldn't pick it up. It takes one mic. Right. It takes a mic to, from, from somebody else. Thing? What we really need is like four mics. On, yeah. We need four mics going directly into this in the future, and we would, and they're on anybody that's a potential speaker. Right. The other thing is they have those like conference room mm -hmm. mics, which are like those flat octopus things. And if we put one of those on the middle of the table, that would help. Or like turn that more into a circle. Um, that would be easier. Yeah. Yeah. And then just have like two separate mics for like auxiliary speakers. We can, um, yeah. And then everyone just kind of have to talk sitting down. 
but that would be better. <laughs> so we actually have four mics if you need more mics. So especially you do. Yes, I'm charged. I didn't charge the other two, but they're they're charged. But you can take somebody can if somebody's going to ask a question out there, they should run with one of the cordless microphones like this one. I wonder if you know this isn't for this meeting, but I wonder if we if that has the capacity to just wire directly into the Zoom. Yeah. If it if can handle four mics, it might be able to feed, yeah. do an audio feed into the Zoom meeting and make, that the and make it so that it's hearing everything, exactly. you know, sure. that's. Well, uh, I was going to just use this in passing. Okay. okay. Yeah, that'll be fine. We don't want to do too much of this stuff. Yes. Yeah, somebody, mm -hmm. somebody that, should, like, even somebody should learn right with that. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the best thing. Yeah. That'd be great. As opposed to where you were sitting, it's possible. And I know that they won't like um, in here for okay. Yamamoto. So there's two more over there. Yamamoto, he wouldn't, um, he wouldn't stay in front of the computer. Yeah. He said, oh, I don't do that. I like to walk around. He said yeah. that right during the meeting. So he, mm -hmm. he was going to carry that. That's fine. But he didn't pick, get picked up on here. Right. That's when it, why I got the little clip on things, thinking we could come to some, con you know, because they'd wear that. I mean, yeah. it wouldn't, you know. We can give Doug the tech education. Like, Doug. <laughs> You're gonna have to sit next to the computer. I'm sorry. Yeah, but people. <laughs> sorry, like this. <laughs> people, every speaker would have to come over here and sit right here. I don't or, see it going that. Like we can just move this podium on the other side of the table. I think that that's. Well, really if you're talking to the microphone and you're close to the laptop, there's static. <laughs> but I can't, and we can't let them sit here in front of it anyway because I need to be able yeah. to ex excluding people and reading. You know, yeah. it needs to not be. What the speakers in front of, I need to be in front of it too. Right. To, because if we get, a, I need to turn people's mics off as they come in. Right. And then read any message that Tina, Tina's going to read all the messages. So I'm, she's going to send me an instant message if it's something that pertains to Bob. Yeah. That Bob needs to do something with. Yeah. So other than that, I'm not going to read the messages. She's going to answer them. If they've already been answered or she has the answer, she'll just, she'll just be one of the people that responds to their yeah. requests. I know that this can be done. <laughs> the, uh, we can get this better. I don't know where it is, but like when people join, they'll be automatically muted. But I don't know if we necessarily want that. Or do we want them to yeah. No, I mean, well, we can't sure. automatically because we end up muting this one. When we set up the invitation, we should have clicked the box to automatically mute yeah. coming in. Yeah. We already set it up. Yeah. Now, Does that. So then it mutes mute, mute our, our microphone, the very microphone that they're going to hear it with. Yeah. So if you could mute everybody and unmute whoever you wanted, that would be really nice. Well, they're the host, you should be able to unmute yourself. That's the host. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the host should be able to unmute. Yeah. Yeah. I, do, I just. <laughs> I just didn't know that. I mean, this We're is, for sure with certainty. So this this is an amazing setup, right? In there, they have the ability to. Uh, it focuses on who is asking questions in the audience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a better person. setup than yeah. this, but it's yeah. so, it's small. They have, they have speakers on all four. I mean, it's 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 pretty cool. It was a, I was told it was a budgetary thing. You couldn't put it in both. Of them. Even just like, I know this is also probably a budgetary thing, but even putting a curtain behind that would probably help with some of the oh, yeah. audio, yeah. like the acoustics in here. What did you just say? Uh, putting a curtain up, like behind For, the screen, here. so we don't have the starting here that way. And yeah. Behind the screen or something? Oh, really? Yeah. Might help. It's still a big room. Like absorb some of the echo and the sound. Yeah, it's still, oh, yeah. it's still yeah. a big room. Now, when we had the PUD conference here last in September, but then we come up with another idea and we might be getting in another, another something in here. I just briefly talked about it at, uh -huh. at the uh, Chamber of Commerce meeting. And uh, it was a, a laptop just designated for you here, and then there will be another, not a projector, but another something. Where we could do, could do Zoom. And we, you guys can do it right here. You can do it just like you did yesterday. Your Zoom, Zoom pictures are right up here. Right here. Right. Everybody that's um, logged into Zoom. Yeah. Um,
And we can actually that now is this is if we want to do we'll turn that off right now. Okay. Yeah. This it's a lot of this is okay. And I guess I'm going to say the room. And then you got people coming in to obviously do Zoom or whatever. They want to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> and so if we're open air and somebody is talking to the audience. The cameras and the and the speaker's gonna go with them right. and they might be talking about what they're having for lunch. Mm -hmm. But it's gonna be on the whole anyway. Well the other thing I remember we were saying is because we don't have right now, we don't have a camera or something that's in our room, you know, set like right Oh right. You could do that there. What happens again they were talking about being a separate camera. We have the one camera in the back. And so the presenters are sitting at a table looking at the TV screen. The camera's in the back, and you're seeing the back of the heads of the presenter. But you're able to dial in everybody and yeah. zoom remote. So he just turns his laptop in, the camera in the person at the right? Well, we usually should have it. Well, since he's there, though, and he just turns it when somebody's at the podium, wouldn't that go on Zoom? Well, if you got to right now, we got to start with a piece of tape. Did you hear what I did? I did. I'm looking to see if I can even see anybody. I don't. Is your, uh, is your video on? Yeah. Do you see the picture? I have not seen you, I've only seen Oh, my, no, my video, no, no, no. Um, I just, had, let's see, let's move this list over. Yeah, my, my video's on. I, I mean, I'm, see, I see my, my face. So if you turn on your laptop, it will come, it will face the podium. But if you turn on your camera, it will go to the podium, is that right? Yes, but for the attendees, you know, we're not seeing this video. So even if he turns it, you're still not going to see the But the Zoom people, they will see it? I'm a Zoom person back here now. I'm not in She's time. not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. So I'm I'm seeing what people from wherever else will see. And I did not see it. Okay. Now yesterday we had your laptop up there, Bob's up there, and Tina. So your pictures were there. Yes. So if we did that, if you turn the camera on I can't do that. Uh, well, I mean, I can, but I can't. I can't. Then he won't be. I won't. I, I need to be able to um, read what's on here, and I need to be able to uh, mute the people as they come on and keep them muted because they can unmute themselves uh, from their phones. So I, it, it, we're constantly trying to keep them muted so we don't hear their background noise or the. Yeah. So. Yeah, it sounds like a little mermaid version. There is a mermaid version. Did you get some of the words talking? No, thank you. Yeah, this room is very wide and very I was at a conference, a real estate conference one time, that we had a real office laying together. And there was some guy in Yakima. It was on that Washington State Associated Builders meeting, and it was all asleep and started snoring. Oh, no. Uh, you could pick it up. Oh, they couldn't get him up? Because he didn't know he was snoring. Turn off the light. He didn't know he was snoring. He didn't know he was snoring. He didn't know he was No, we have a couple people logged in. Welcome. Cool. Let's see what happens. If there's one of them, I. Well. It's getting better. I'm looking at my radar picture. It's definitely an improved year. Is it on a new edition? It's not right. Yeah. The more yellow and red it looks. No, I don't have to do this. Do you want to put a podium on the second? What are you doing? Wi-Fi. Uh, I think. 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 Uh, I think.
Charles, do you want to sit up here? Do you want to sit here or, 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 or in with, with this? Yeah. No, you're not. It's not you, yes. Oh. I'm going to take it first. <laughs> Again, yeah, have a set of your hands, which is all the just together. Oh, yeah, 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 that's what it's. Yeah, that's what it's. Yeah, that's what it's. Yeah, and then we'll have like, this kind of thing. Oh, yeah. And then we'll have this kind of thing. Yeah, cool. And we're going to grab a chair and take some after that. We'll see if all these people show up. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's all aboard. In reality, I'll dress up like that. It doesn't really. Yeah. It doesn't really need to be me doing this. If you, right. If we go for if you know what we know, then you know yeah. it could be either one of us. And today it's just kind of going to be what it is, but it's going to be a little better than it has been. And then the next meeting will be a little better, and yeah. then we'll get it. Yeah. yeah. Just the minute you turn it on. So nice. And this is the little one. It's just the um, yeah. Just, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So far, I haven't had to meet anybody mm -hmm. other than obviously back there. Yes. So, she was in the same situation. If there are any, then so we have to go on with a certain function and then the results. Yeah. But now you'll know if it comes through on your private email. Yes, I can do it on my own. Because they have your phone number on that. That's the general chat. Oh, that's your direct message with her. She's going to send me a message. Bob needs to get a Got it. If I can get him to read it, so So basically, I've got. I'm stuck with my audio on. We can use this for now too if you want to do the contract. I mean, art might be a little bit better. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, there, now it's showing up. Well, so if you wanted to meet this guy, if you wanted to meet this guy, that's why I'm showing you that the microphone shows up. And then I click on the Oh, there we go. Yeah, so. Got it. Probably, 
probably up here somewhere. Oh, is that it? What's up? On this. Uh, 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 that might be the mic. Maybe. That's your last name, Leslie. Leslie Chuck. Leslie Chuck. I might be joined over. Do we determine that that's where it is? I think so. I'm sure it's not the front. So we're going to do this part. That's how you can Yeah, the infrastructure. You have what you have available for the whole box. So what we saw the presentation was a good yeah. Yeah, it's the same the Senate bill, the Senate bill, and then if you don't put the chair, no more steroids on. Thank <laughs> you. 
Chair. Uh, Dan Rawlinson is coming in from the back there, is our secretary, and then we've got uh, on the uh, land use committee there, Kathy Rollins right here up front. So that's our, that's our board. Um, and then we're going to go through and do some well, real quick self introduction. We'll pass the mic to everybody, and uh, we'll start up here first. I'll start up here. Okay. Yep. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sarah Asher, Director of Community Development. Good morning, uh, Burr Olson, Baltimore County, and I'm a senior manager. Good morning, I'm Richard Wagner, I'm Board of Commission Chief of Staff. All right, test. Let's see if it works. We're testing technology. Test, test. Is that working? It's not done. Here we go. Might have been dead. There we go. Yesterday, 
tested the new AV equipment and the buttons and we we'll put in some time here. Hopefully this uh, gets recorded. We can post it on the website and uh, people can also uh, view it if they weren't able to attend, but uh, we got that for you. So let's go through housekeeping. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off our phones. Let me do that while we're talking about that. Um, and then uh, we are recording this uh, on Zoom, all right? So that is our goal. Um, Chief Peter, did you make it? What's that? Go back over here. Anywhere. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're learning. Uh, he's not here today. Normally we have him speak because he usually gets calls uh, and has to rush out. Let's go on to the uh, three committee updates. Um, what we're going to do is we go through the uh, the sub suburbs that we have, uh, the parking, land use, and tsunami. Uh, we're going to start with on the parking side of things. Um, we're going to go ahead and we, we normally get an update from Larry Rouse, who's our representative that uh, attends that meeting. But we actually have the, the people who run the meeting here today, um, and, and, and uh, Rachel and Brooke. And we thought we would go ahead and let them speak about what, uh, what's going on on the parking advisory committee. Okay, so we have been managing the advisory committee for many years now. We're currently on our winter break. We will resume again likely in March or slightly right before spring break and plan for the upcoming busy seasons. We have a, a regular attendance from uh, appointed officers for the Parking Advisory Committee. We do need a tier of the bar, um, spin that bar. So if anyone wants to raise their hand, um, let me know. That would be great. Um, and then we'll resume in. <laughs> we'll resume probably in about February. Um, so, um, let's talk a little bit about the PC show. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, there we go. So the PC shuttle is one of our um, longest hero stories for the Burden Advisory Committee. It's been in place for three years now, started at the end of COVID, and was largely successful. Um, oh, I guess I'm taking off a couple of the topics that the Burden Advisory has been a part of. So we, um, what we've been doing is making is a large part advising on the one border project, which I'll let Rachel discuss more detail later. So the advisory committee works with anything traffic parking related for that project. Um, they uh, work on the wayfinding that you'll see the banners and signage around town. There's a wayfinding plan that's being implemented. Uh, and we have the shuttle service, which I'll touch on next. Uh, there's been a due rating to help with safety and first responders and um, managing uh, beach access for people who decide to drive on the beach. Um, and we do pay the park, which is now two years deep, and um, we have staff on that which we're able to touch as well. So the pay the park is currently at the Kuwana parking lot and the PC turnout. The uh, next slide is the shuttle. So the shuttle is our hero story. The cute red, um, cute red trolley that's driving around town in the summer season. It runs from Memorial Day through Labor Day, and um, it is hugely successful. It's a partnership between TCTV and uh, the county. And um, just to give you guys some ridership stats, um, it I think it's one of them. It has one of the most largest riders per hour, I'm not going to DC uh, appropriately there, but it's one of the most successful ridership per hour in the county. So it's largely popular. In 2021, it jumped off a little bit, and then in 22, it almost doubled its ridership. It was slightly down this year, um, and that is still high numbers in comparison to the rest of Tillamook County, and that is mostly because of the labor. Uh, getting labor down to South County is, is still challenging for DCTV. 
Uh, peak regression hours are from 10 in the morning to about 4 in the afternoon, with one being the highest time that people are riding in the trolley and you can flag and stop and do on and off. Um, what I do know from being out here and working with businesses and driving on flyers is a lot of uh, people who are in the service industry don't even know that the shop the shop exists. And so I'm only trying to increase your rates in 24, getting out in front of the being their new service new. It's a new server for the industry gap here. So just trying to increase knowledge of the shuttle and other goods. Can we go for the next slide? Could you get a little closer to the mic? Yeah, can you go to the next slide? Thank you. I thought I did. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, passengers by, so Saturday, so it's a Friday through Sunday operation, um, and then it also includes holidays like uh, Fourth of July, Memorial Day, etc. And uh, the ridership is largely on Saturday afternoons. The peak has a six point in the afternoon. Um, the passengers per hour is uh, uh, on average five to six passengers per hour on Saturdays, and they all the way down in a little over two on Fridays and holidays. So you can see it's the numbers are so low, but it's uh, it's a good trend for, for South County, and I actually can't compare it to others with some DHT numbers. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it to Rachel. Leave it, leave it there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good morning, man. So, I hope you can do this in the back of the not really big. Um, the county has been collecting the use fees at the Cape Water parking lot and the Pacific City turnaround since March of 2021. So, what you see um, beyond this part to the left is all the Cape Water lot, and this is all the Pacific City turnaround. These are daily use pass revenue data. This is data pulled right from the kiosks monthly. It does not include annual pass revenues. So the way the park system works is when a uh, citizen purchases a daily uh, annual pass that is appropriated throughout the park systems um, to each site, and then that revenue does go into uh, those other sites. So Cape Wanna and the Pacific City Turnaround are indeed receiving a portion of the annual pass revenues. It's just really difficult to track. Um, and I think these numbers have more value because it is, just, it is a small amount of revenue. So these are days, past, revenues only. We started collecting in March of 21, and then you can see all the data here. You can see the difference between 22 and 23. That's what the number is in the column with the, some of the red numbers. So in January, for example, at Cape Kiwanda between last year and this year, there was a decrease in revenue. And then there was a decrease through March, and then it started to increase in April, even with the construction going on and a large portion of the lot closed. We saw an increase in June and July. There wasn't a decrease in August, and I don't have I, the data is available, but I don't have the downloads from um, the September and October. <coughs> so that's why there's a gap there. The green box. Uh, notes when our parking ambassador Charlotte came on board. She has done a fabulous job, and I think it's really showing an increase in our numbers overall. And she started, and then the blue box just notes when the construction of the Cape Wanda parking lot started. So, overall, between last year and this year, between January and August, because that's when I had the full data, there is a net increase of a little over $6,000. And then there's a similar analysis of the Pacific City turnaround. Overall, those numbers are, are lower, and there's a and that decrease on that site down here over here. Uh, the numbers down here, I just wanted to highlight um, when I was, you know, the time we go through their annual budget process in the spring, and I needed to develop uh, revenue projections for the parking fees, and I did a convoluted calculation of how many parking spaces would be taken up for construction and try to get a, a reduced estimate of revenue. That projection led me to a number of $218,000 in revenue, and we are above that by $23,000. So I was, I was pleased to see that, that even though um, construction is impacting a lot, it doesn't seem to really be impacting our revenues at this point, which is good news. Um, overall, we have seen um, the total revenue generation of about $950,000 since March of 2021. And 
those revenues go into the county dedicated fund only for use in Pacific City. It would go into the general fund. It's not used for public works or anything like that. Um, and so it's used for works time. It's used for uh, the parts of the parks time when they come in the restroom or do other facilities maintenance at the site. It's used for sanitary when you periodically do, and it also pays for the shuttle, the extra routes that the shuttle is running in the summertime. So it does go right back into the site and it is paying this year what it can afford to, um, a portion of the construction of the gate Next slide. Any questions on numbers before I move on? I would still love data and if you have questions. And this is just a chart. I like charts, it's a little easier to digest sometimes visually. The dark green line is Cape Kiwanda 2021. The light green line is Cape Kiwanda at 2022. And the dark orange is Cape Kiwanda at 2023. So the peak of the dark green line was a revenue of $71,000 in July, which the data was on that previous slide. The light green, Peak of 69,690 in August, and then the peak of the orange this year was 68,400. That's it on parking fees. All right. Okay. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see how it's doing. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> We have a question back there. Yes. I have one question. Um, you have any statistics that you have any comments on uh, revenue from citations? The question is, is there any revenue from citations? Is that being tracked? I do not have that as a great question. Uh, and then what about tracking that? Uh, the data would be available as we contact Justice Court to see what revenue might be realized through anything that comes in through them, but it, it does not come to this part. Um, it goes to a whole series of cases of fines and different things that are in a very complicated formula that I've seen just as part. It doesn't come to the, the site. It doesn't go directly into the path. Yeah. Path. yeah. You know, obviously, we would love to have more law enforcement than to write more tickets for the uh, parking violators. We'll find our commissioners about that later. But, uh, no, good stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, land use is the next uh, committee report. Um, nothing new has been uh, uh, presented to us from the county that we needed to get involved in uh, since uh, the last meeting. And uh, Catherine's taking the issues uh, keeping on top of that uh, and uh, watching, watching the website right there. Uh, we go to the next slide as well. So, for example, all the land use permits that are going on, they track. Uh, and as you know from previous meetings, some, there's phases of, of permit requests, some that are automatically uh, addressed, and others that would impact land use. It's presented to us uh, at the CAC for, for review. So, that's how that works. But nothing, nothing new on that point. Um, wait, by the way, is the other committee uh, that we have, and Barbara Taylor um, is part of that committee. She's going to give us a quick update on uh, what's going on with the uh, tsunami signs and what have you. Um, we'll get you the microphone, Barbara. I don't think that Could you stand here? Yes. It would be great if you could stand yeah. right here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think I'm okay here. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, 
the county, and by then we had to get a permit from the road department that had not existed during uh, here in Del Mar and Nestle to got their side of the job. Uh, and it re one of the things that required was the length of the poles that the signs go on. We had ordered a lot of poles, so the wrong length of signs. So those we were able to somehow use in because he did not. Uh, include the DR doesn't not sure it on my form and shores, which independently come out a lot of the signs. Uh, is it? No, thank you. Uh, it was great. Okay. What if it has been stolen? I don't know if it's been in place. Karen, has it been in place? I don't know. Um, uh, and they are, we are now pre assembling the signs with which a suggestion that uh, David Sears made to our committee. And uh, it just makes sense to find an indoor space. Anybody volunteers at the indoor space uh, where we can put the signs together. So when we go out and we're going to slow down until the weather changes. Which takes us to the late spring. But if we have all the signs pre assembled, so it has to be really generous to the garage or a full run, um, then we can go out a couple of weekends and get it done. I mean, this has gone on for a long, long time. But we're making progress, and I think we're almost there. Thanks. Thank you, Barbara. They have been working really hard on this now for quite some time. I see a good question. Okay, with an online question, let's see. Yeah. We have an online question. Is it this one? Oh, no, that's it. Yes. It has to do with the timing of the discussion start um, for that parking lot discussion. Is it possible to do that any later? It's starting at 7 a.m. Okay, so the question is uh, with, with regards to the uh, kick on the parking lot construction, is there any way for, to start that later than uh, 7 a.m.? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> I, can, I can pass it along um, to the department team, the contractor, with a lot of negotiation and discussions with community partners and hotels, et cetera, regarding the work times. And I think everybody's on the same page about understanding um, what this was going to be and that it would be a disruptive summer. And if we started cutting hours, it was just going to delay this disruption period and actually cost more. Um, but I can, I can enjoy that. I do. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Uh, no, no, uh, old business, new business. The Kawana Corridor Project. Go ahead and hit that slide. Go ahead. And again. We're gonna go through a couple of slides here again to refresh your memory of what this project is. So after several years of planning and studies, the board adopted what we are calling the Kiwanda Corridor Project, which is a culmination of all of that work, the plans and the concept plan of implementation strategy, strategies to actually put things on the ground, um, infrastructure wise. And so what the Kiwanda Corridor Project is, it has five strategies. One is reconstruction of the Kiwanda plot, which we're doing right now. The second is finishing the improvements that the Inspector Valley Community Alliance began developing with the Quantum Corridor Project team to, to the next level. But working through finishing those improvements, developing, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, they want a lot of the community work. And then the work. Oh, the short pine, the short pine, yeah, the short pine, um, 
village, the boardwalk there is in disrepair, and late in this project development, we decided to add it on because it is uh, it is an infrastructure piece with visitors and residents use, which fits within the goal of the on the border project. So it makes sense to include it as um, potential opportunities for the county and or Shopine Village. Um, There we go. Okay, so there. Um, and then, the Bellevue Benton property that the county acquired a couple of years ago that is going to be um, a parking lot on the south side, open space in the middle with some trails, and then the Dorian's Heritage Museum, which I'll talk more about um, adjacent to the um, um, and there'll be the blue line is the multi-use path that will connect all of that together for a variety of things. Oh, and I forgot web park, I'm sorry. The relocation of web park. So relocating existing web park into a larger parcel in the back of the county owns that is undeveloped. So web park is there and then where web park is currently will be developed into a parking lot. Okay, so this is the Equal Parking Lot. This is what we're working on right now with the Saunders Company, our construction contractor. So basically, the goal here is just the true flow of the parking lot. There's a small increase in the number of stalls, but hopefully, it will function better for traffic flow. People will be able to get in and out quicker, and pedestrians, while they will still likely go all over the lot in, in whatever direction they would like, hopefully, the new sidewalks and where the amenities are placed will help funnel them to where they should be walking. So hopefully there will be an improvement there. There will be a civic overlook, which will be um, a paved area that will function as a gathering area. Uh, it could be used for events that are already happening in the area. Oops, I'm sorry. Um, uh, sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> charging station, benches, all, all the cool stuff that you would hope to see at a parking lot, as well as wayfinding. We are literally getting rid of, I think, every single sign out there and rolling out all new signage so it looks uniform, it's pretty, and the messaging is clear. Um, there's a lot of clutter and signage out there, which happens a lot in county facilities where we just do what we can and we, we, we make do and we put a messaging as needed, but this is an opportunity to start over and, and have it really Okay, then now next slide. <laughs> uh, this is a rendering. So this is an old rendering of the Pacific Overlook. This is the this is looking east, and this is the, the beach here. Um, we wanted to have the step down feature, but it's not really feasible from a permanent standpoint. So the function the function of it will be the same, but there won't be this step down uh, feature to the beach. That's it. And then this is looking obviously to the west. Um, I think everything on here is fairly accurate from a rendering, except for the trees. Mm -hmm. um, that is all going to go around. Uh, it looks nice, but there were obviously concerns about maintenance and um, the view of the ocean, so all of that will be uh, low ground That's it. And so where we are. Yeah, so, we're, so we started last spring, we went on hiatus during the summer for obvious reasons. Um, we resumed in November, October, no, September. Let's get October, we did up in September to um, so a little bit of construction period and we donated to the and right now they are working on um, pouring the foundation for the new restroom and we should have bricks starting to be laid in the next couple of weeks. They are also grading, they're bringing a lot of rock in right now. They're starting to grade the east side of the parking lot, um, where in, in that corner where the old restroom was, there'll be a garbage and um, 
there'll be a garbage recycling center and that's where the concrete planks at the bottom of the ramp will be stored in the off season when they're not in use and then that'll all behind, be behind a gate. So they're grading that area right now. And there's lots of the behind the scenes work going on. This is a really big construction project and there's lots of submittals, requests for information, lots of um, items going back and forth between the engineer and the contractors, getting materials ordered um, to keep things moving. And I think we're going to have a new press release coming out soon. Um, we have one at the start of resuming construction, but we'll get a press release out here soon in the Pacific City Sun to give you all an update on what we're going to do on the construction. And we're also buttoning up the wayfinding plan so for the site. So Brooke mentioned, and you're probably aware of the Pacific City wayfinding plan as a whole, and that's what the banners are that you've seen on Bruton Road and um, along Cape Juana Drive here. And so we are using that and the colors and the fonts and the door boat sign, hopefully, um, to, to use that as inspiration for what we're doing at the Cape Coin a lot. So we're finalizing that hopefully in the next week or so, and then we'll be circulating that to the PAC. So those of you who are on the Pacific City Woods Parking Advisory Committee, you'll see that here soon, and we're looking for your input. Okay, next slide. That was the early, earlier shots there. Earlier shot, um, they are starting, yeah, they're starting on the north side. So the north side, as you know, is closed. South side is open. They're hoping to resume complete the north side uh, in the spring and then they'll um, move to the south side with the goal of the whole parking lot being operational and fully functional by the end of next June. There will be some minor uh, pieces that the construction contractors working on through the summer, like final striping, maybe some landscaping. But the goal is we're pushing on them pretty hard because we do not want to be working on um, the parking lot in the summer. So we're hoping it's all going to be operational by next June, by the end of next June. Might be good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Before we do that, I want to share that um, the. Yeah, what did we have online? Oh, okay, good. What will the shoreline become? Rip rap like, like Nesquin? The shoreline. The rock, the, well, the rock. Oh the yeah, rock. so I don't, yeah, I don't think there's a rock, there's not a rock face. Yeah, it's gonna pretty much look like it does now. It's just the, the parking lot will be paved with that, um, that gathering area, that civic mm -hmm. overlook that I talk about, and then it'll just roll off kind of like it does now. There will be a little bit of rip rap added to the south side of the ramp where we are going to have um, stormwater outfall overflow. So along with all of this, there is a whole new stormwater drainage system that is below the parking lot, because right now everything is running off of the parking lot down the ramp, which contributes to all that erosion. I saw some new stuff out there right now happening at the ramp. And so there's a whole series of catch basins under the new parking lot. So they actually have them on site right now, if you see them on the other side of the construction fence. Um, and so for any overflow that doesn't percolate naturally through those under the parking lot, which will be in an extreme rain, so probably on days like today, but it won't be all the time, we'll actually go through that outfall. So there will be a small amount of riprap um, halfway up the ramp where that pipe comes out, which we're covering. Just south of the ramp? Yes. Well, on the south side of the ramp, uh -huh. halfway up it. Gotcha. Before you get up to the to give a brief update on the feedback. That's what I was going to Yep. So, yeah, let's move on to the Jensen update. I did want to share. Um, so, the project is funded almost entirely by transient lodging tax dollars. Um, that was a decision the Board of Commissioners made uh, when we signed, the, when the board signed the contract of this. It was never the intent that transient lodging tax would fund that much of the parking lot, but they, we all just really felt it was important to get something on the ground because we have been planning something here for so long. So the construction is largely being funded by transit lodging tax dollars. We also did receive $750,000 from OPRD. So we'll be looking at how we're going to uh, work that into the construction budget. We also have two, one pending grant application with Cypher Oregon. The construction bids came in much higher than we thought, and we had to pull some items out that we could defer to later. One of those is the bike, the electric bike charging stations. That's going to cost about $45,000. So we were building in all the infrastructure, but we can install the actual bike racks later. 
We had a grant opportunity with Cyber Oregon in the amount of forty-five thousand dollars that we submitted. So hopefully we get that grant and we can roll out the, the electric bikes. And then additionally, we do have secured twenty-five thousand five hundred dollars from an ODOT program to fund um, to reimburse the county for our costs in rolling out the the electric the um, EV hard charging stations. So we are getting some grant funding that is making a little bit of a dent in our TLT money. Um, the project is also being funded by, as um, I mentioned earlier, the parking fee funds, I think maybe one to two hundred thousand dollars of the parking fee funds is going to that. And then the Public Works is able to contribute contribute a little bit out of their bike ped funds to some of the bike ped work that we're doing in the lot. So anything on the parking lot before I move on to other parts of one third? Question. Of there's two. Two. Uh, will dune lowering at the turnaround encourage more driving on the beach? Dune lowering at the turnaround? Encourage Are they more driving, more on, driving the on the beach? So potentially, and that's something we've been working with, um, set the fire on for emergency response. We are working with community development on that. The group is supportive of, all the players are supportive of lowering the dune. The surveyor has gone out, completed the survey to identify the elevation to see, because you can only lower it to a certain elevation. And so the surveyor identified what the current elevation is to see if it's even worth the work to lower it. And maybe, I don't know if you want to mention that, speak to anything more on that there. Just, um, thank you, Rachel. So we have the uh, difference in cubic yards. So it will come down to reconvening that meeting that will be all within that data to decide if, if it is a cost-effective project. Perfect. There is also a question about water quality treatment in the parking lot. Will there be any filtering, any any treatment to the to the drainage? Post construction. I'm assuming this is a post construction, not during construction. But um, if, if it's related, so obviously all erosion control measures are in place during construction. Post construction, um, the goal is this whole new stormwater management plan of this underlying system under the parking lot will help. Will will do just that, which is. Huge improvement over what is happening now because it's all running, so it's all running over the surface of the parking lot, which obviously is not ideal. So the, the catch basins will collect that, and they are able to be cleaned out. Okay. So that is the goal: is to improve water quality. Okay. Anything else? I, I just go ahead. There. Um. Let's look at that vehicle. I just <laughs> There's a question about um, electric bikes, bikes only on the beach, uh, remove vehicle access out the turnaround. So I'm not sure if they, if they only want electric bikes or not, but will electric bikes are okay on the beach? Yeah. Is that? I assume so. Yeah. And then the turn, at the turnaround, will, there will be vehicle traffic as well. Is that? Well, vehicle still traffic going? is allowed now. Yeah, yeah that will continue? Yeah, vehicle okay. traffic at the turnaround is not prohibited and there are no plans to prohibit it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the Jensen property. Uh, next, next slide. Okay, yeah, so there's a couple other grants that we have pending related to the one quarter project. This is one of them. The next strategy that the county wants to pursue is development of the Jensen property. And the next slide. So this is the, the goal of developing the Jensen property. Here's the turnaround. This is everything green the property of the county acquired, and this is the line intersection. So the first part to implementing the Jensen part of the whole Columbia Corridor project is this intersection. And we have an opportunity through um, U.S. Department of Transportation's Rural and Tribal Assistance Pilot Program. We submitted $360,000 to them. There is no match. With this, we should be able to fully design this inter intersection and get it to um, construction documents, which we would then need to um, acquire the construction funding. So that is where we are with the Jensen property. Um, we are also working with the Morning Association on the Heritage Museum. Which is, which is this box here. The Dorman's Association acquired the Transit Lodging Tax Grant three years ago, 
and they started using it to develop um, concepts and feasibility on the property they received by donations by the library. And they ran into some hurdles with potential development there, and so concurrently, as we were working through the concepts in the Quanta Corridor project, an idea was suggested to put the Dorgans Museum here. And so that actually had a lot of traction and went through the whole public process. We talked to the association a lot about it, and it landed in the, the concept plan. So the first proposal, which is supported unanimously by the Dorgans Association, is to explore putting the Dorgans Museum here. They did spend a little bit of that TLT grant, it was about $55,000 left. And with it now being in the Quanta Quarter Project, the Dorgans Association is supportive of using one of the county subcontractors who, who participated in the design for the Kitmore parking lot to start doing some uh, schematic planning and design on how it could fit here. Because right now it's just a box on the map. We know it can go there, but what does that really look like? What's a rendering? How many rooms are there? What's the square footage? How does it function as a museum? And also, very importantly, how does it function with the Kaiwan Center? So the concept is the parking lot would expand south onto the county property and then the museum would be over there. But you can imagine the different events going on at the same time. There'll well, need to be lots of coordination on that. So that's exciting. The, again, the board just signed the contract this week uh, to spend that money with the sub-consultant and we have meetings already scheduled to start working with the consultant and the Royals Association and the Kyle Center and furthering the scope of the museum. And lastly, uh, we have a pending grant with Travel Oregon uh, for $100,000 to complete the wayfinding of the Guana Coro project. So there's a whole Pacific City wayfinding plan that talks generally about what things should look like, color response, etc. And we're doing um, the specific details of the Guana Coro project at Guana Parking Lot now. But that's your basic signage. That's where do you turn, you park here, um, the fee kiosk, all of that kind of stuff. The next level of wayfinding that we want to incorporate for the whole project is the interpretive piece. Having um, you know safety, stewardship, how you get around, where to park, all of that kind of stuff is in the larger quarter project wayfinding plan, which is part of the Pacific City wayfinding plan. I hope that makes sense. Um, I think that is it. So lots happening. Very no exciting. No more questions. Couple, no more questions. <laughs> okay. um, is anything being done to keep people from using beach access here and then driving down the beach to the area that is that should have no vehicles on the beach to stop them from making that that run back and forth? Is there anything being done to keep people from driving over the turnaround and going down the Cape Water? Yes. Not other sign. than just, yeah, 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 there's a sign, um, and it would be OPRD and Sheriff Enforcement, I think, as they're alerted to it or they're on site. We are going to have a sign, I don't think there's anything there now, on the back of the new gate. So if people do that and they try to get out Cape Wanda through the new gate, there would be a sign on the back of the gate, it's going to be locked, that says call left. I see. But as far as enforcement, I think it's just been fire and sheriff's office. Can, can you take a couple more? Oh, that's online? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is uh, any guess on the timing of the web park parking and new campground? No. There have been lots of conversations over the last year, um, especially detailed conversations with uh, adjacent landowner about um, the infrastructure that needs to support web park. There's a lot of work that needs to be done along Cape Juan to drive regarding the utilities that need to be done before we actually start on the campground. But um, that's a very large, I think $10 million was the estimate for the parking lot, another $10 million for the campground, and I don't think that really accurately captures all of the pieces around the utilities. So it's a very expensive, very complex part of the, it's not just doing a camp, it's not just doing a parking lot. Um, so it's it's trickling trickling along and it's kind of been paralleling our other work uh, with the Quantum Quarter project working with the, the parks um, committee, committee. And then I have I wouldn't say that was going full speed ahead and there's absolutely no time. Right. Uh, you may have just addressed this in, indirectly, but it, it the last question I have here is please uh, clarify funding sources for the Jensen property. 
Um, the current secure, there are no secured funding sources for the Jensen property. Um, as I mentioned, TLT is funding so much, um, and other things actually had to take a back seat that were funded out of this last county budget. And so I do not see, it's a board decision, but I don't see huge amounts of money going to help move that forward at this time. So we're relying on grant funding. And so we have the, the one pending grant to support the engineering of the intersection at this time. So hopefully we can get that and then we would be looking for construction. TLT could pay for a piece of it, but the millions of dollars, I would say at this point, is unlikely. Let's go out here. Okay. So, Rachel, so we, does the county own the original uh, Gory Museum uh, property now that was sold by the What's the question again? The, the question is Does the county own the existing Gorman's Association parcel by the library? The answer is no. And thank you for actually raising that. And there's a point I want to make about the Gorman's Association Museum. The county has no intention to own, run, or manage this museum. Uh, it's it's uh, been now a part of the Quanta Corridor project, and we're just using a leveraging opportunity to use a contractor that we an engineering contractor that we already have on board. But while I've been leading all of this, we are definitely taking a backseat to the, the Heritage Museum. We're kind of on the sidelines, just making sure we can support them as we need. Um, the board signed the contract to get that going, but it's really going to be a boring association led project. But no, we don't want that. Already. All right, we good? Okay. All right, Rachel, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, explain that corridor project. Uh, I did. Yeah? Yes. Yes, that's what I was going to mention. Uh, they, they're, they're spending their time here to, to talk to us this morning, and then they're going to slip out. I told them we present their, their quick stuff up front so that they can step out. But uh, thank you very much, Roman and Rachel, for, for spending time. Yeah. Right. Let's move on. All right, the uh, Willa County Ordinance 84 Amendment 2, which uh, was not controversial at all. We're going to get an update in a, 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 a footnote. Um, we're not going to go through the Ordinance 84 Amendment. It has been approved by the commissioners. And it is not going to be uh, adjusted anytime soon. The goal today is uh, Sarah's going to give us an update and on the next steps, uh, which will be talking about the uh, cap percentage that is associated with the Sarah? And, yeah, yeah so, so that way we can pick you the, the best seat? Oh, right. Um, Maybe right, right, right about where it's going to be. That is good. That is good. Not too close here. Yeah, so, yeah, that's right. There you go. Good morning, everyone. Uh, and my name is Sarah Asher, the Director of Community Development and Development Property. I have a couple of things to visit with you about today. The first one is an update to the short term rental ordinance 84 amendment 2 and where the department is at in the process with implementation of those program changes and updates. So I um, thought I mentioned today, not really getting into the nuts and bolts of the changes, we did have an opportunity to have that discussion at the last meeting. I bet that probably recorded someone else, so if anybody wanted to go back, they could look at that. So a couple of things today, as many of you are aware, uh, the ordinance amendment and adoption uh, was challenged uh, in the Ladies Board of Appeals, so in the bills by the two of the public law. And the record, I believe, has been settled for that process um, that will now be examined by that uh, land use appeals board. The record is over 5,000 pages, which really um, speaks to the amount of work that went into that process and the level of community and citizen and stakeholder engagement. That record in its entirety that includes all of the short term rental advisory committee work, all of the public comments received throughout the process, and then the subsequent public hearing process is actually available on the short term rental advisory committee page of the community development website. So if you'd like to see that 5,000 and some on page record, 
and uh, also all of the community recordings of all of our meetings and then the public hearings that can all be accessed on that social mental advisory committee page. The program resumption lottery took place on October 10th. There is a wait list now that has been created for the Pacific City Wood sub area, which is defined as your community boundary. There are roughly uh, eight or nine recipients currently on that waiting list. And then uh, the rest of the recipients who would apply during the program results from lottery on it. So we are in the process of working through 11 new licensed applications. They are in various stages of uh, getting the information that we need to get the license application complete. And then others are working through their um, Others are working through their fire safety inspection and those final pieces. So one of the next steps that I have that I am tasked, tasked with with the Board of County Commissioners is to go back to communities like Pacific City Woods, Nestle, and Deer, Delmar, and others, and have a conversation with the community about the cap. So the cap, there was a cap established for this community and others that are defined by the sub areas. And the question now is, is the percentage appropriate? We're in Pacific Cities at 24%. And Bob, I think you have a slide for that. So one of the things that I am here today to ask is if the CAC or you know, and other members and stakeholders within the community would like to get together to start looking at that cap percentage. The percentage, as you can see, um, is to be a percent the cap percentage is based on the number of dwelling units in the community, the number of taken from its own family task rolls, and very simple now it is the number of licenses in relation to the number of improved dwelling units. So you can get the percentage of, you can get the percentage determination, simple math. Um, so right now we're at 23%. And then, so part of the conversation with the community would be, is that too high? Is it too low? Should there be areas where we have um, private gated developments that historically identify themselves as destination uh, communities, communities that are largely there for training and lodging purposes, should they be included in the cap percentage? Or should they be excluded and then the cap percentage adjusted depending on where else that cap should apply in Pacific City Woods? We're going to take it in the Thank you, Commissioner. I appreciate that. So, working with Bob, um, and then um, Bob, we've had this conversation about helping to put together that list, having a separate meeting outside of the CAC meetings to start a working group to evaluate that cap percentage. The other pieces of the ordinance and the program will not be part of the discussion or the process. Ultimately, what it would be is is the percentage, is the cap where it should be, and then uh, moving forward, I would make a, whatever comes out of that conversation with the community a recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners sometime in 2024 to adjust that cap percentage. So our, our, I talked to Kathy before the meeting here, we talked about forming that group for this, uh, this group here to take a look at the, the percentage, the cap percentage. All right, and if you're interested in joining that group, please email me, all right, and uh, we'll put together that group because we're going to need that group to work not only on the SDR percentage, but also uh, on the upcoming uh, Senate bill discussion as well. So if you're interested, email me and uh, we'll add you to the group. We'll take any and all volunteers. So, uh, I appreciate that. I would, um, as we move into Senate Bill 406, I would say that these are two different tasks. Senate Bill 406 is land use related, the cap piece is not. Yeah, yeah. 
they are separate, so we will have separate orders. We can have say we can go on those, but just to keep them separate because the cap piece is not. Sure. I'm just looking for volunteers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Volunteers are all right. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, so that is the update for the short term rental program ordinance 84. I anticipate the hearings with Luba to be scheduled sometime uh, in the near future. Um, there have been four appeals filed, two were dismissed, and the record is in relation to the remaining two that are under evaluation, and I will share any updates as they become available. All right, next up. Okay, so now we're talking about 406. What is Senate Bill 406? Okay. So Senate Bill 406 is a bill that was sponsored during this last legislative session by Senator Suzanne Weber. Everybody know Senator Weber? Senator Weber? Senate Bill 406 is a housing bill. It's unique to Tillamont County. It applies to all of the seven incorporated cities. So those being from the city of Tillamont North to the city of Manzanita. And then the bill also includes all of the unincorporated communities in Tillamont County that are urbanized, meaning they have water and sewer. So those unincorporated communities include Pacific City Woods, they include Muscone, Oceanside, Lee Tarts, Miyakani, and Barbara Jim Rocks also go. And what this is, is it's a middle housing bill. It largely mirrors uh, House Bill 2001 that was passed by the legislature in 2019. And the purpose of the bill is to redesign or amend the land use programs for those applicable cities and unincorporated communities to allow middle housing outright in residential zones with clear and objective standards. So I'm going to take a step back and explain what all that means. So middle housing is up to four dwelling units. Clear and objective standards means that they can be permitted outright. So no conditional use. It is a very straightforward, do you meet setbacks? Do you meet building height? Do you meet parking requirements? And do you have water, sewer, fire access? So it mirrors what we already do for permitting a single family job. Things like floodplain development permits are still required if it's in an area of special flood hazard. Things like um, doing area development permits for areas on sand or geologic hazard reports for our property that are on slopes that are in areas of known geologic hazard are also still required. But what it does is it creates a clear path forward for construction of housing that is up to four units. We know that not every property in Pacific City Woods or in those cities is large enough to accommodate four dwelling units. That's not what this is about. What this is about is proportionality of being able to do a duplex or a triplex or a fourplex with that clear path forward, provided that those standards for setbacks, parking, building height, etc., can be met. The work that is going to be taking place is starting in 2024. I will be working with the seven cities and the unincorporated communities, including Pacific City Woods, that are part of this bill to start amending zoning districts and um, comprehensive plans and community plans where appropriate to reflect this work. The timelines that are in the bill mandated by the legislature include benchmarks for completion at the end of 2024 and 2025. So the other request I have today, independent and separate from the CAP discussion, is either working with the land use committee or a New York Excommunicated Committee to help me with this Senate Bill 406 process. So it will be providing input, helping to share information with community members. The bill is specific about the requirement for up to four dwelling units, attached or detached, but things like parking, open space, maybe some landscaping requirements. There is some room and flexibility within that work. 
for us to work together to think about what else would the community like to see as part of those clear and objective standards. And the other pieces are what are the barriers that you identify in the community that are stopping housing to be built for people who want to live and work in this community. So we might look at also lighting, you know, add some lighting standards to that. The key is it has to be clear and objective to where whatever whatever is brought forward for adoption at the permit counter, it is a yes or no. Did the applicant provide that information and meet that requirement or not? And so that's that's how we have to design that up to four units uh, for the zoning districts. The, the Oregon Department of Land Conservation and Development, also known as DLCD, um, has reached out to me. They have some funding and technical assistance available to help us do this work. So it's the seven cities and the incorporated communities. So they will be joining us and we will be working with the consultants as well. And um, we're really excited about that. That speaks to the efforts of Tillamook County leading the way to really look at rural areas and smaller communities and cities to help address our housing needs and our housing crisis. So um, waiting to hear back from DLCD on when that consultant will be able to join us. I'm excited to bring them here to start working with you. Um, and then the other piece of that is the Tillamook County Housing Commission will also be joining us to do some of that work. And so it will be a great opportunity for the Housing Commission to connect with the community and um, work with all of you as well. So, and before I forget one more plug, um, the county's multifamily housing fund. So that fund comes from revenue from short-term rental operator license fees to help support of course housing development in Tillamook County. The application process closes Monday at 4, so if you know anybody that's working on an application for funding, um, please remind them that the deadline is Monday at 4. But this round, we are giving away $400,000, which is huge. So, um, you know, that again speaks to the work of County Center of Housing. We appreciate that um, partnership with our children rental operators, and also, of course, for them, which is the Oregon Restaurant and Lodging Association. So lots of really good work happening, more good work to come, but we love your help and engagement in this process as we get ready to start. Thank you. Yeah, I you ready for questions at all? Um, there's one from online. Yeah, there's, um, well, one, he says, um, will there be reductions in hookup fees for multiple dwelling projects? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So, um, as you know, your SDC system development charges are determined by the Pacific City Joint Water uh, Sanitary Sewer Authority, PCJWSA. Um, we do not have um, any input in determination of those fees. But we look forward to having conversations with the PCJWSA in the future if they are interested in looking at alternative strategies for funding support that will lead into the housing production strategy portion of the process that we will be working on after the zoning amendments are over and done. So, um, so the answer right now is, I don't know, but I think that's a conversation that might be able to continue especially if through this process when we get into the working on this and the funding and support for funding because we all know that is a critical piece to making sure that as we develop we have the right infrastructure and we can get our infrastructure All right, all right, we good? Good. Yep. All right. Thank you. Oh, that's it? <laughs> so far, right? for now. Okay, so uh, we're going to move on. Next subject is the FEMA. And uh, Sarah and uh, Mr. Yamaha are working on that, and we're going to start with Sarah. Okay. Thank you, Bob. So, a quick update Tillamook County continues to participate as a cooperating agency through the federal environmental review process. So, as you were aware, uh, Tillamook County was able to provide comments on the implementation measures that the is proposing to meet the requirements of the biological opinion that was moving for Oregon as a result of a lawsuit. 
there isn't much to report on what is happening in that process. Where we are today is working on a series of data collection efforts uh, that FEMA is requesting through their consultant to quantify economic and social impacts to our communities as a result of implementation. We still haven't seen any clear or specific language regarding the four regulatory and compliance pathways that FEMA is designing for us to choose. Um, so. Um, however, uh, anything that comes, any information that becomes available, I will be sure to share with you when I am here and I will make sure Bob gets it. Um, anticipating another public comment period, if they can stick to their timeline, sometime end of winter 2024. So, we'll keep you posted on that. And that is all I have for today. Thank you. So, obviously, we won't have any results from FEMA. We still have to address some of these things for the Senate bill as well. So, there could be an impact on what that final decision is on what's derived from this Senate bill. Right. So, those properties that are in those mapped areas of special flood hazard, that is where we will see the interconnectivity of both of those obligations and how they react to each other. Should we be open to say anything about this? Well, I would like to say a few things about uh, a lot of this. Um, so I just need to start by saying this, this has been the honor of my life to represent uh, this community in Tillamook County uh, as, as your commissioner. This is the first time, my understanding, the first time in Tillamook County that a commissioner has ever left for the first in so many ways. Um, those of you that know my wife, Terry, uh, know that I always listen to my wife. Um, both of us turned 70 this year. And she told me today, you know, we really have thought about doing a lot of traveling. Uh, we're not getting any of it. If we're going to travel, we need to start now. Um, this was the most difficult decision of my life, honestly. I love what I do. I just love what I do. Um, but there comes a time in everyone's life where you just know it is time to retire. So I made that decision. I'm leaving a year early. Uh, fortunately, we have Doug Olson as my replacement uh, for 2024, which is terrific. Um, but once I made that decision that I was going to retire in, and I made that public, now whenever anyone comes to me and talks about retirement, Get a big smile on my face. I do. Uh, but again, I want to thank everyone in this room for everything you've done. Uh, I'm not leaving until the end of the year because there are a lot of things that I'm working on that I would like to bring closer to fruition. You need to understand, tell them a county in the state of Oregon, one of 36 counties. Uh, we are the leader in so many ways. I've got commissioners from all across the state coming to me and asking how we do certain things. Uh, and it is amazing how people look to Tillamook County because of the amazing things that we have done. One of the first, this, this was even before I was commissioner. Uh, our Guardians for Food and Shelter came to Tillamook County, and I was at the first uh, planning meeting. Uh, and we developed Tillamook Working Lands and Waters Co op. And we, we asked, so what are you doing? Well, we're educated. We have so many people, and I can imagine there are a lot of people in this room. Uh, that have come here to retire, don't understand modern dairy practices, modern forestry practices, modern fisheries practices. It's all about education. So, my, my first few weeks at AOC, the Association of Oregon Counties, going through county college, seven years ago now, um, it, I, I made a statement, and I made a statement now so many times, and I know you've heard, when it comes to clean water, habitat restoration, and fishery recovery. No Oregon County does this better than Tillamook County. You know, 200 pairs of eyes and we would just roll with all of us. That's when I decided we needed to bring commissioners to Tillamook County and take them on tour, show them how we do forestry practices and dairy practices and fisheries practices. And that first tour just cemented the relationship with AOC. Uh, our Tillamook Working Lands and Waters tour tours uh, are coveted, the most coveted tours in, at AOC, the Association of Oregon County. So that's just one of the many things we do to 
buyout. I, I've been involved in the buyout for eight years, over eight years. Uh, and we, we are in the best place that we have ever been in, in the buyout. Uh, when, when Congresswoman Wanamichi took over Tillman County at the beginning of this year, I sat down with her and we talked about the buyout. And she got it. She got it, which was amazing. She is browbeating FEMA for us, which is terrific. Uh, at the same time, I feel, and I'm not sure if there's an agree with me, I feel that it is because of Congresswoman Bonamici that we have been named a cooperating agency. We are at the table every time FEMA talks about the EIS, the Environmental Impact Statements. Um, we are going to be at the table. And people, people are saying, well, David, you're not going to be there. I'm just a mouthpiece here. I am. It's the people doing the hard work behind the scenes, they're after uh, Molly Lawrence, they're attorney, uh, and, and we've got a coalition of agencies now from across the state that are joining us in this fight. So again, this is another place where we are leading uh, the state of Oregon. People and counties are looking to us uh, to try to figure out how to get out of this mess that we has created. Housing is another area. Um, with, with a lot of the things that we are doing today, uh, we are advancing workforce housing in, in Tillamook County. We are, you know, with Senator Weber's help on House Bill 406, House 406, thank you. Um, again, this is another area where we can really lead. So, again, I, I, I'm sorry that I am retiring, but I'm not sorry at the same time. This, this is, and commissioners come and go. And I'm, I'm very glad that Wilson is going to be stepping up from South County. Um, so he's going to understand all, all the issues. Uh, one other item I'd like to talk about is the Kiowa Corridor Project. Um, you know, we are spending a ton of money right here in the city. city. That's because when we and then Doug Olson and I sat at the table, that Doug was in this group nine years ago, eight years ago, when we brought the transit lodging tax. When we brought the lots, transit lodging tax to ballot. And it, it's all in the messaging. Uh, local residents are not paying this transit lodging tax. So it should be an easy vote. And it was, it, it passed overwhelming. Uh, and that is kind of the catalyst for a lot of the things that we're doing here in Tillamook County. Not using your money, but the visitors that come here, we have to take care of when they come here. Uh, one of the things I always talk about is infrastructure. During the summer months, Tillamook County's population doubles, triples, quadruples. And we have to develop our infrastructure for that high peak visitation in the summer months. So, that the, and those are very expensive. So, again, Tillamook County leads in so many different ways. I've been, I'm so pleased to have been just a small part of that. Um, but Sarah and others in the county, Doug, uh, really good hands moving forward. So again, I just want to say thank you uh, for your support, and I will talk to you again very soon. I've only known David for a few years, but uh, class lab. He actually was a chair of the CAC way back when as well. So he has been putting a lot of time and effort into our community and appreciate all of that. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, he's handing the reins over to another gentleman who's also very, very engaged in our community. Doug, do you want to come up and say a few words?
gift that came from Facebook because of how they messed up the entry on the Tillamook County in uh, <laughs> Mark. Uh, they uh, felt sorry about it, came calling with their checkbook, and so that's what's paid for. What we don't have here, and what we're working on, just as, as a point of information, uh, that room over there, the Faye Jensen room, has a full camera microphone set up for uh, the internet, which we're on here. Uh, the missing piece is another camera here that can uh, swivel, tilt, and zoom, and a little bit different microphone system that could be placed around the room. That's going to cost another 4000 bucks, give or take, but we're on our way to getting that as well. And we're pushing uh, the uh, JWSA here, because they use this building, and I'll look at Anne, uh, that they may contribute to part of that, and then we'll have what I would consider to be a perfect system, minus one thing, you need a laser, so you don't have to point your finger and walk around. So all that, all that's going to happen. So uh, the second thing I'll mention, then I'll talk just a moment about uh, the county and who I am. Uh, I've been on the PUD board now for 15 years, and I submitted my resignation at uh, the end of the year, uh, which would correspond with Commissioner John Moore of leaving and my taking his seat uh, right after the first of the year. Uh, there's an opening now, or will be very shortly, on the Telemark PUD board. And so if any of you are interested, I'd be happy to visit with you and tell you who's in, <coughs> me what's involved, how much time. It's roughly three days a month in Salem, and another two days, three, no, three days in Portland, another two days in Salem, uh, and then some local meetings. So it's, it's uh, if you have zero time, you probably wouldn't be interested, but if you've got all that time and interest, I'll talk to you about it. There's not much compensation. If you take it all in, you get paid $500 a month. Uh, and then uh, if you go out of the area, there's some, a little bit of compensation. But anyway, if you're interested or you know somebody who is, refer them to me, and I'll just tell them what goes on because we have to fill that position for our end of the community as well. And then uh, also, uh, well, I'll talk for a moment about uh, who I am and some, some of you who don't know me. Uh, my wife, Patty, and I have been here for a little over 30 years. Uh, we owned the two motels in the center of town for 20-some years, sold them, and theoretically have been retired uh, <laughs> over that period of time. But uh, I grew up in Little Hood River, Oregon, which is up the gorge. And uh, many of you have been up there, and it's, it's not unlike uh, Tillamook, uh, the city of Tillamook, because uh, back in, in the 60s when I was there, uh, we had lumber mills and fruit orchards, didn't have any dairy. Uh, and we didn't have, back then, a tourism component. Now it's overwhelmed with tourism. So you, it's evolved, much like Tillamook County has as well. We have our dairy industry and our natural resource uh, uh, forest products and fishing and so on. We also have a, a substantial tourism industry that is helping pay for everything that you see. When Commissioner Yamamoto and I, and also uh, Bill Bartline, the three of us were really the ones who took the lead in putting the, the measure for TLT before the voters. And we used a state lodging tax at the time and extrapolated from that and said, well, you know, if we're really, really lucky, we're going to generate somewhere around a million and a half. That was 10 years ago. And today it generates over 8 million a year. And that money is divided under a state formula, and I won't get into that. But that that's become uh, the second largest funding source for our road system and a significant part of how we pay for everything else, as you just heard. And so, so it's a big deal. And, and uh, by, by the way, I've also been the chair of the County Budget Committee for a long time, uh, over a decade, and so I'm pretty familiar with that. I'm certainly not as familiar with a lot of uh, the things that Mr. Yamamoto has been working on, but uh, I've jumped into the deep end of the pool and I expect I'll, I'll uh, get up to speed, may not be as effective as he is, but on a lot of areas, I'm, I'm pretty knowledgeable. As, as many of you know, I've been the president of Tillman Lightweight for several years, and uh, Commissioner Yamamoto represents the county. I represent PUD, and then we, the port, by the way, the port of Tillman Bay has determined that they should withdraw. And so we're, we're possibly going to pair with another group, possibly the college, maybe a consortium of uh, the school districts and so on, but that's, that's underway. The, the port will actually finalize their withdrawal on December 2nd. 
But anyway, that has to do with fiber and lots of other things and internet access. So uh, I, won't, I won't go on with any more, except that you'll probably hear more from me. Um, and I, I appreciate the confidence that the commissioners have, have shown in me. And I guess uh, uh, when, when you, I'll, I'll just say one more thing. I started out, I, I worked my way through college and got a degree in business and went to work for large corporations, ended up, uh, I was, grew up in Oregon, but I ended up in Chicago with a really, really good job. I was buying hardware for a national company, all, and uh, he lived in the suburbs in a three-level home and all that stuff, but I said, I don't think I like this, and I certainly didn't like Chicago, so I came back to Oregon. And I, and I later on, I took a job with the school district and, and over in Vancouver, and I, I learned that I had a bit of a calling for public service. The motivation is different, the mindset is different, the people are different, and I, I grew to really respect educators, teachers, even though many teachers can't balance their checkbook. Uh, apologies to any of you who are teachers. <laughs> uh, but they're some of the most decent, good human beings that, that I've ever met in my life. And so I, so I had a connection with public service for a long time. I went from there to Washington County nine years where I was her contracting officer. I did much of what Rachel has done, much bigger organization. But uh, and then when we came down here, we bought our business and decided to do something good, different. But uh, it wasn't too long until I ended up on our JWSA board here, which at the time, some of you will remember, there was a separate water board and a team board. And they combined, and I was part of that process when it became a JWSA, a Joint Sanitary uh, modern sanitary authority, which it is today. So I've had a lot of connections on um, in public service. I've been elected by all of you seven times, I think, to one board or another. And I appreciate that. And I told the county I will serve and do my best for, for a year after that. I don't plan to run for election uh, because that term or will be, you know, that position will be coming up in the May primary and then on to the fall uh, election in 2024. So having said all that, uh, I'll be your commissioner for at least a year and I, I promise to be accessible, available, and answer phone calls and emails. Maybe not the same day, but quickly. Uh, and if you have issues, most of you know how to reach me and my, my uh, emails and phone numbers, I'll publish them. I even have a computer, uh, a new address now with the county. So we can do it that way. Anyway, anyway, thank you for the time, and, and uh, I'm sure I'll be seeing a lot of you, and again, many of you I see at the post office or mm -hmm. all the time. So thank you, Bob, for the time. Absolutely. He's a real thoughtful guy. He was one of the first guys I saw out when I uh, you know, got this high paying job as chair of uh, assistant. <laughs> <laughs> but very knowledgeable, and uh, you guys have put a lot of things. Uh, anything else uh, for the good of the order that uh, anybody wants to bring up at this time? If not, we'll go ahead and do a wrap. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hope you learned a little something along the way. And then we do we want to thank uh, Mr. Yamamoto and Sarah for your time, and uh, we really, really appreciate it. So, have a great day. And a great weekend, stay dry.